In this video, I'm going to answer this question from Francisco here. They want to know how to delete all lines in a file that contain a character in a certain group of characters. So for example, if the line in a file contained the character A, we would delete that line from the file. Let's go over how to solve this problem in C. So for example, I have this file here. And certain lines in the file have the character at, and certain lines in the file have the character semicolon. We'll say that's going to be our group of characters. And we're going to write a C program that can delete any line containing a character in that group of characters from the file. So the first thing we'll do is allow the user to enter in the file name and allow the user to enter in the group of characters. We'll have to store those into character arrays. So we'll say car file name, and we'll declare this character array to store the file name. We'll define a constant for the file name size, and we'll say 1024. That should be plenty of space to store any reasonable length file name. Now, the way we're going to solve this problem of actually deleting the lines from the file is we're going to write to a new temporary file, the modified version of the original file. Then we're going to delete the original file and rename that temporary file to the original file's name. So we're going to need a temporary file to help us solve this problem. I'm going to make a character array called temp underscore file name for the name of that temporary file. And I'll say file name underscore size as well for this character array too. We're also going to need to store the group of characters and we'll store those as a string in a character array as well. So we'll say car delete underscore cars and we'll define the length of this character array using this constant max underscore line that we're going to set to 2048. Because as we read in each line of the file, we're going to store it into a character array as well. We'll call that one buffer and we'll give it max line length. And 2048 should be a reasonable length buffer, but if we had to make that bigger, we always could. We're also going to need some file pointers for the file itself and for the temporary file. So we'll create two file pointer variables as well. Next, we'll prompt the user to enter the file name. So we'll say printf file colon. Then we'll use fgets to store the file name they enter into the file name character array up to a maximum of file name underscore size characters. And we're going to read that data in from standard input. In other words, the terminal or the shell here by default. Then we're going to actually set file name at the string length of file name minus one equal to the null terminator. The reason why we're doing this is when we use f gets to read in the file name, it's also going to store the new line character as the last character in the string before the null terminator. So what we're doing here is moving up the null terminator by one character. We're getting the current length of the file name and subtracting one from it. That'll give us the position of that new line character in file name. And we're replacing it with the null terminator. That's going to end the string one character earlier, getting rid of that new line character. Next, to make the temporary file name, we're going to use some string copy and string concatenation operations. I'm going to include the string.h library that includes functions that allow us to carry out these operations. So what we'll say here is strcpy, string copy, and we'll say temp underscore file name, comma, temp underscore, 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 underscore. So what string copy is going to do is copy this string temp with four underscores into the temp underscore file name character array. So we're starting to build the temporary file name. We're giving it this as the initial portion of its name. Then what we're going to do is concatenate onto this, the actual file name. So we'll say str cat, the string concatenation function, and we'll say temp underscore file name and then file name. What this is going to do is concatenate onto the temp file name so far, which is this, the actual file name that we're going to open. So if the user entered in 
file.txt as the file name, then the string copy function here would initially make the temp file name temp with four underscores. Then the string concatenation operation here would concatenate onto that file.txt. And that would then be our temporary file name. And we're gonna say that's okay for our temporary file name. Again, we can make this something else if we wanted to though. So now that we've got that, let's ask the user to enter in the delete characters for our group of characters that we wanna delete lines in the file if they contain one of those characters. So we'll say printf delete cars colon to prompt the user to enter the characters. Then again, we'll use fgets. We'll say fgets delete underscore cars max underscore line stdin. So again, we're gonna read up to max underscore line number of characters store them into the delete cars character array. And we're gonna read them in from standard input, which by default is gonna be the terminal and the shell here. Then we're gonna actually do the same thing we did here with delete cars. We're gonna get rid of that new line. We're gonna say delete underscore cars, str len delete cars minus one is equal to the null terminator here. So again, when the user enters in characters from the terminal, like at and semicolon, and then they hit enter, the delete cars character array is gonna contain a string like this with at semicolon and new line because the user hit enter to finish their input. We don't want that new line character. So what this is doing is taking the length of the string currently and subtracting one from it. That's gonna give us the position of this new line character. We then replace it with the null terminator character which is gonna end the string one character earlier. And the string is gonna end right here. So that's how we do that with delete cars, just to get the input down to the characters we actually wanna delete. And this strlen function, that's also coming from the string.h library that we included as well. It finds the length of a string, not including the null terminator character. Now we can actually open up the file and open up the temporary file. So we'll say file is equal to fopen, file name r. So fopen is gonna open up the file with the file name the user entered in reading mode. That's what the r means. And it's gonna return a file pointer that file is going to store. Next, we'll open up the temporary file. So we'll say temp is equal to fopen, and then we'll say temp underscore file name. And this time for the mode, we're gonna say w here because we're gonna write the new version of the file to the temporary file. Now, if either of these f opens fails to open the file, they're gonna return null. So we'll check for that. If file is equal to null or temp is equal to null, we know something's gone wrong in the opening of the files. And we're gonna print an error message and then exit with an error status. So we'll say printf error opening files backslash n and we're going to return one we're going to return one because returning one instead of returning zero is a signal to the shell to the terminal that something went wrong in the execution of our program next we're going to read each line from the file and we're going to check it to see if that line contains one of the characters from our group of characters and if it does we're not going to write that line to the new temporary file. Otherwise, we are gonna write that line to the new temporary file. I'm gonna use a Boolean value to help me determine when I should stop reading from the file. So I'm gonna include the stdbool.h library so I can make a bool type variable and use true and false. So here I'll say bool keep underscore reading is equal to true. And we're gonna use that to determine when we should stop reading from the file. I'm gonna say do, and I'll say while, keep reading. So as long as keep reading is true, we're gonna keep reading from the file. I'm gonna use fgets to read in the next line from the file and store it into the buffer character array. So I'll say fgets buffer max underscore line file. So here what we're doing is using fgets to read up to max line number of characters and store them into buffer. And this time we're reading from the file, 
the file we opened up here in reading mode instead of standard in. We're going to check to see if we reached the end of the file or if there's been an error reading from the file. So first we'll check for the error. So if when we call f error with the file pointer, it returns true, we've experienced an error reading from the file, if this is true. What we'll do is again, print out an error message and exit with an error status. So we'll say printf error reading file backslash n. We're gonna return one to exit with an error status. What I'm also gonna do is close the temporary file and I'm gonna use the remove function to delete the temporary file. Because if this has occurred, something has gone wrong reading from the file, we can't really complete the work. So what we're gonna do is just close that temporary file and then actually remove the temporary file from the file system. Because at this point, we just can't complete the work. Next, we'll check to see if we've reached the end of the file. So else if f eof, when it's called with the file pointer, returns true, then we've reached the end of the file. And we'll set keep reading equal to false because we're done. The next thing we want to check for is whether or not the line of the file that we've just read in using fgets into the buffer character array contains a character from a group of characters or not. If it doesn't contain a character from the group of characters, we're going to write that line to the temporary file. If it does, we're not. So we'll say here, else if str p brk buffer and delete underscore cars is equal to null. And here's our check. So this str p brk function also comes from the string.h library. And the way it works is it checks for occurrences of any one of the characters in this string, in this string here. And it returns a pointer to the first occurrence in this string here of any one of the characters in this string here. If it can't find any one of these characters in this string here, in this string here, what it returns instead is null. So in other words, if strp brk returns null, when we check buffer for any one of the delete cars, that means that none of the cars in delete cars are found in the string buffer. And if that's the case, we do want to write this line to our temporary file because it doesn't contain any of the characters from a group. So we'll say f puts buffer temp. And we're going to store that line into the temporary file there because f puts is going to write the string in buffer into our temporary file. Now at this point, after this loop has done its work, the temporary file is going to contain all the lines of the original file, except those that have a matching character from our group. So the last thing to do is close both of our file pointers. We're going to close file and we're going to close temp using F close. Then we're going to delete the original file and we're going to rename the temporary file to the original file's name. So we'll say remove file name to delete the original file. And then we'll say rename temp underscore file name, file name. And we're going to rename the file with our temporary file name to the original file's file name, replacing the original file with a new version of the file that has those lines deleted. Now let's test out our program. We'll save it. We'll compile it. And then we'll run it. We'll enter in file.txt and we'll enter in at and semicolon for our characters. Now let's check the file again. And notice how those lines that contained either a semicolon and or an at character have been deleted. And we're left with the lines in the file that didn't contain one of those characters. So that's how we can solve this problem using C. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers, including courses to help you develop C programming projects.